Albert, how are you? I can't hear you because you're muted if you're trying to talk, Albert. Now it's working. Now I can hear you. How are you? I'm fine. I just moved into my attic, but uh, had to oh. set up my monitor, my laptop, my everything. It's 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 a mess yet. Uh, in mm -hmm. fact, it's not a mess. It's empty. <laughs> so. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, it's a lot. week ago. Nicer than my office at the moment. Mine's a little hectic. Yeah, that's normal. But I'm really yeah. tired, so that helps. <laughs> yeah. Well, I used to try to hide it and like do the Zoom backgrounds or anything. And eventually, I just like, yeah, I don't care anymore. Yeah, uh, it's no problem. All right. But uh, we're the only two yet. Oh, Tony is uh, connected. Tony's here. Uh, there were like 20 some people who signed up, so we'll see who shows up. Uh, Okay. Olivier has to show up because he's giving the presentation. So that's, so at least that's waiting handy. for him. Yeah. <laughs> so now we did it, Matt Live yet. <laughs> yeah. So where are you located at? Like what, what country are you in? And the Netherlands. I'm okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. The, 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 the city of Philips. Phillips, where I worked 41 years. Oh, wow. And I, I was working in uh, research over there. And it was fun because Phillips at that time was really a big company and had a lot of different research uh, activities, from chips to, to simple semiconductors, to medical devices, to uh, lighting, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, television setups, all kind of stuff. And I was working in the, in the supporting uh, staff for automating uh, research setups. So just let's say uh, we started working in 93, trying out LabVIEW after 15 years of Pascal and C. And uh, my colleague said, no, I don't, don't like it. It's, it's too dangerous. It, it's something new and you found something. Uh, but after a year, he said, hmm, I'm glad I didn't do this in Pascal. Yeah. No, that, that's why I, I learned some Pascal when I was in high school or something. But to me, like the syntax just drove me nuts. And like, that's one of the nice things about LabVIEW. Like there is no, you have to worry about like leaving off like a colon or semicolon somewhere or something. In, in fact, Python part. is uh, influenced quite a lot by uh, LabVIEW and uh, by uh, Pascal and Modula. Okay. That was the successor of Pascal. Wow. And if you learned it well, it was a good language. It had no no flaws, but it had also no libraries. <laughs> ah, <laughs> Not many. Yeah. So, that is the problem. The famous statement on the Apple II Plus where we used it was procedure too long. Because wow. if, you, if you had more than a few hundred lines, it didn't fit in the compiler anymore. On, oh. on the Apple II Plus, there's 48 kilobytes of memory and 16 in a language card. So you had to do with a little bit of memory. Wow. But it worked. Cool. Yeah, I just took a class on it in high school. That's all I did. So it was pretty simple programs. Now, 
if if we eat Python, you see a lot of the language back. Better yeah. Python's better than Pascal was. The only problem I have is it's not as strict as it could be. If you don't declare a variable, it still exists and stuff like that. So yeah, there's some <laughs> Python has some interesting, yeah, the typing is very uh, loose. It's, it's loose, but, but not really loose. It's, uh, you can fix it, but that's, that's, you have to do that again. <laughs> yeah, well, I think they added something recently called like type hints or something that kind of does a little bit of that for you. <laughs> New kind of lint again. <laughs> yeah. What happened to C? Yeah. Uh, yeah, luckily I've not done a whole lot of C, so. No, me uh, neither. Me neither. Yeah. I don't like we, it. Yeah. Well, apparently, if you really want to understand what's going on, understanding C and assembly is like really useful. But it's useful, uh, but it's a write only language, I always say. If you write it, you understand. And five minutes later, it gets difficult. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of my opinion. Like, I can pick up like Java or Python or C Sharp, and I can kind of figure out what's going on. And C, yeah. it's like. Mm. Yeah. It's <laughs> just leave it that, yeah. that way. And assembly, probably even worse. But mm. I haven't played around it's, with that it's, much. It's, it's, it's a lot of details you don't like. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, I'm, I'm kind of odd for an engineer. Like, I, I only like details when they support some bigger goal. Otherwise, they're just yeah. like inconsequential yeah. things that need to get out of the way. That's, that's just what I think. <laughs> that, that's the way I think, yeah. But no, my, my wife is an industrial engineer and like we talk about something and she gets hung up on like the tiniest little details and is asking me all these questions. I'm like, I don't know, like, you know, it works and that doesn't seem to affect it. So I'm there. It works, it looks good. I can't follow yeah. the lines. So why not follow? <laughs> well, I, I learned a lesson about that once though, because I was, I worked at a company that made nuclear power plants and we were putting uh, some new cabinets in the control room. And this guy was flipping out because they used the wrong paint. Like it was the same, it was the right color, but it was the wrong paint or something. And apparently it had something to do with off-gassing. Apparently like, you know, the control room, if the temperature got too high, it would off-gas poisonous gases or something. That was a big deal because they wanted people to be able to stay in there stay to like there, fix like, whatever was wrong. So in that case, mm -hmm. it did make a big deal, but like, I wouldn't have thought of that as like uh, having any importance. I'm like, yeah, paint whatever color you want. I'm like, who cares? So. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. indeed. Yeah. That's 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 what you find. That's the nice thing about research. You're working closely with researchers. They know what they want to do, and you can help them a little bit. Mm -hmm. And together you build a program. He he knows what he wants, and he always knows something extra. <laughs> so just start being flexible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, you definitely if, have to be. <laughs> yeah. Because you drive yourself you're, nuts. And for sure, your program is never finished. <laughs> in no, yeah. 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 And that's that's the fun of it. Let's see, it's now yeah. almost seven. Yeah. The other thing I liked. It, yeah, the other thing I liked about working in research is it was a lot less stress than like people who are doing like production stuff because they always have like yep. very hard yeah. lines and stuff. Yeah. And in research, like people generally knew it was going to be a no year. matter what. So like <laughs> with, with in a year or yeah. something, sometimes five years. Yeah, I mean sometimes like you had like certain stage gates to get funding and things like that, but other than that, it was pretty low pressure. If it happens yeah. you know, today or a week from now, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. not not really a problem. If you finish it uh, in time, next month or so, that would be okay. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's Olivier. It's on. Olivier, there he is. What is my computer making some noise? Oh, is that my phone? Oh. All right, that was my reminder on my phone to tell me that we have a meeting, so I'm already here. You like that? Perfect. <laughs> cool. And there's Danielle. Now we can start.
Okay. Um, okay, so uh, welcome. Uh, for those of you who haven't been here before, we do these uh, every other month. We do a uh, presentation on some kind of software engineering related topic. Um, so my company, SAS, uh, one of our things is that uh, you should be able to be productive and, and produce lots of good, great live view code and still have fun at the same time. And so today's topic kind of ties into that because documentation is not much fun. At least I don't enjoy it. And uh, Olivier has this product called Antidoc that allows you to automate a lot of that. So uh, I think that's really useful and it has a lot of use cases. Olivier is gonna tell us all about that in a minute. Um, before we get started, I just wanna mention that uh, we do have our LabVIEW mastermind group. Uh, Stefan's in it. If you have some questions, maybe you can ask him. Uh, but we're gonna start a second uh, setting of that. So if anybody's interested, uh, we meet uh, twice a month and talk about software engineering topics and do some brainstorming and help each other out. Uh, it is a paid program. It's a quarterly subscription. So you can find more information about that on our website. And then also we have a unit testing class workshop coming up so uh, in January. So it's uh, every Tuesday through January. It's like a three hour long Zoom call where I've got a bunch of slides we go through and you do some exercises and then there's some homework. And so uh, if you're interested in that, check out our website for that. And uh, if you have any questions, you can always send me an email, uh, Sam at SAS Workshops or hit me up in the chat here. Uh, I'll be kind of moderating for all of you. So uh, without any further ado, or however you said that, uh, here's Olivier. You can uh, take over. Uh, let me make sure I gave you permission to share your screen. I think I did, but. I can, I can't. All right, now try now. You should be able to. Yeah, okay, it's working. Cool. Yeah, if you have questions, you can throw them in the chat and I will uh, be perform the moderator duties. Can you see my screen? Uh, yes, I can. Okay, so thank you Sam for the invitation for uh, speaking uh, about uh, Antidoc and uh, about documentation. So um, before I start my presentation, uh, uh, I will take a few seconds to introduce myself. So I'm Olivier Jourdan, I'm um, French, LabVIEW champion and uh, LabVIEW uh, architect. Uh, I've been uh, working with LabVIEW for 20 years now. And uh, two years ago, I started my, my own company named uh, Wova Lab. Uh, we are an I partner, we are DQMH trusted advisor. And we basically, we are helping people with uh, LabVIEW. Uh, we are uh, designing, developing uh, LabVIEW application. We are helping team to uh, I would say uh, improve their process uh, in uh, working with LabVIEW and working in team. So uh, just let's get started about uh, Antidoc and documentation. Um, I, I divided my, my presentation in, in five uh, different parts. Uh, I will start with a uh, a basic introduction about documentation, uh, general purpose. Uh, and after that, uh, I will dive into Antidoc goals, uh, what you can currently get uh, with uh, Antidoc, uh, with the latest uh, version, uh, what's under the hood, how everything is working. And uh, finally, uh, what will be the, the next feature uh, to come uh, uh, with Antidoc. So about writing documentation, uh, why we are writing documentation? Uh, I think we, we write documentation to help understanding the code uh, because sometimes uh, it's too much difficult, it takes longer time to understand the code. And if you have a documentation that explains the code uh, 
with graphs and uh, and uh, and words. Uh, it could be better. It could be better for maintenance purpose. Uh, it could be better to onboard uh, new developers on a project and uh, probably to share information about your project with non-developer uh, people. And sometimes you you need to. To, to provide the documentation because uh, there are uh, regulation rules. So you uh, definitely need documentation with your projects. But uh, what's happening usually? Uh, if it exists, uh, documentation is not up to date uh, with the code because uh, uh, it's not the priority. You need to deliver uh, a code that works uh, with some uh, deadlines. Uh, it's not easy to write a good documentation. Uh, and uh, documentation, it's not just a list of VI with description. Uh, and uh, as Sam said uh, earlier, uh, we all love writing documentation. We all love using Word uh, to uh, write documentation. And uh, so, uh, the thing is that uh, I think we need to point out that uh, an out of date documentation is often worse than no documentation. So we need to find we need to find a way to to cure this uh, repeated uh, uh, issue uh, with documentation. So. What are the antidote goals? Um, first, it's to generate LabVIEW source code documentation automatically. Uh, and it's about the source code documentation, not the uh, UI documentation. It's not a user documentation. Uh, we, we are speaking about uh, documentation uh, helpful for uh, developer. Uh, the second goal was to take the best out of available info. Uh, we are using LabVIEW uh, as our main tool. So we need the tool to, to get information from uh, explicit uh, uh, data in the, in the project. So you have descriptions, project description, class description, etc. cetera. Uh, and uh, there are implicit information. Uh, we, we, we like to have information between the communication uh, between the different parts of the code, how uh, the different module or process are uh, sharing data, etc. Uh, and at the end, we want to obtain a document uh, in a standard file format. Uh, because when I started the, the project uh, more than one year, ago, um, I, I couldn't say what kind of format uh, would be uh, useful uh, to have. So the idea was to, uh, to give the choice uh, to, to the user. Uh, for the first versions of Antidoc, uh, I, I had the, uh, I had two main uh, goals. Uh, it was to validate the, the documentation generation workflow. So uh, is the tool uh, able to generate easily the final documentation and validate the, the capability to get a valuable documentation. As I said before, I, I don't want just a, a list of VI description. Uh, it's not uh, a valuable documentation for me. So what you get with Antidoc uh, V11, this is the, the latest, uh, the, the latest uh, available uh, version of Antidoc. Uh, before showing you uh, what you get, I, I, I want to quickly uh, um, introduce that uh, Antidoc, you, you get the most of Antidoc uh, currently if you are using DQMH framework. 
So I, I don't know how many people are using DQMH or no DQMH, but uh, this is my first tool. Uh, I'm DQMH Trusted Advisor. And, and when I started to work on this tool, I, I, I like to, to have the tool uh, useful uh, for me. So I try to uh, start uh, passing the, the code uh, with uh, DQMH framework uh, in mind. Uh, and so uh, I can get uh, implicit uh, information that, that uh, add a lot of value for, for the documentation. But in the future, uh, we, we will probably add support for other framework. That being said, uh, how you can get the documentation? So the first thing you need to do is install Antidoc uh, from the IPM, two minutes process. And when it's installed, you have uh, the tool is available uh, in the LabVIEW tool menu. And, and you get the, the UI you can see on the right of the screen. And you just need to uh, select the LV project you want to document. You can add a, a document title, author name, and uh, email. And you just hit the generate documentation button. And when it's done, you get a file. You can open with Chrome, Opera, or Firefox using a specific extension named ASCII Doctor JS Live Preview. And here is what you can obtain. This is the HTML uh, version of the documentation you can get. And this is the documentation uh, you obtain when you run the, the tool on the um, project template uh, provided by uh, DQMH framework. And so you can see that we have lots of information. Uh, we have a list of VI uh, and description, but we also have tables. We also have graphs. And the uh, document uh, is really uh, easy to navigate uh, into because you have a table of content. You can uh, click on the different links. In the table, uh, if you have a VI uh, or a lib, you can click the link. It will uh, go to the, the specific VI you click. So this is really a, a modern uh, document with a lot of feature for navigation. And if we look at the variable information and the information you get from passing the QMH uh, framework. You have a section where you uh, can get information about the different modules uh, used in your, um, in your project. So the first table is a table that lists the different modules, if they are a singleton one or clonable one. Or in this project, you just have singleton modules. And just um, below this table, you have a graph that represents the, all the links between the modules. So the green arrows are the request from one module to another module. And the uh, orange ones are the data broadcasted by one module and listened by other modules. So here you have a, a big picture of your uh, architecture and how the modules are interacting uh, each other. And if you want to know more about one specific module, you can click on the link and you, you, you can see the, the specific section for, for example, acquisition module. And you have the type of the module. You have the responsibility of the module. This is something the Antidoc is uh, getting from the description of, of the LVLib. So this is everything from the, the LabVIEW project. You have a first graph that show you who is coding start module, who is coding stop module, uh, a table with more detailed information. You have the specific VI that call the start and the stop. 
And after that, you have the graphs for this module relationship. So you have four type of uh, relationship. Um, the request of the module called by other module or VI. This is the green arrows that come from the uh, different module to the acquisition module. You have the broadcast uh, data uh, from acquisition module, so the orange arrow. And you have the requests used by acquisition module. So this is the other green arrows. So acquisition module is requ requesting logger module. And he's listening uh, broadcast uh, events from setting editor. So you have everything uh, that, that interacts with this module. And the different table you can uh, see uh, below the graph uh, gives you the, the really um, uh, defined uh, and accurate um, thing. So for, for, for one arrow, you can have many requests. And in the table, you can see everything, every request called uh, by uh, modules, et cetera, et cetera. So for me, this kind of documentation is really interesting. And with this documentation, you can onboard new member in your development team. You can show him the overall um, uh, interaction between the modules, you can uh, show him you are going to work on this module. Is it's doing this kind of um, thing, and you are going to add this and this. Uh, and you can lead design reviews also. Uh, if you make some mistakes, you call things where you don't have to call. Uh, them, you are going to see uh, these mistakes in the graphs. And, and this is something that, that I used uh, many times uh, so far. Um, and as we said before, we need to have documentation up to date. Uh, and uh, Antidoc uh, provide a tool, uh, a CLI tool that allow you to uh, integrate uh, the generation of the documentation into, the, into your CI process. So each time you are pushing something on your uh, CI uh, tool, uh, you can get uh, an up-to-date uh, documentation. Uh, you can glance at a specific and a full CI configuration for, for GitLab uh, here in this project. Uh, I will send the, the link to the to the slides to to Sam so so he can share share, share the slides. So uh, it it could be uh, interesting to to see this project. So uh, with that, we have part of the goals uh, validated uh, for me because we have a valuable documentation. We have uh, a way to obtain uh, a, a document uh, automatically, uh, ready, uh, fully automatically. Uh, and we uh, also talk about the outputs. Uh, I show you uh, HTML5 outputs, but you can uh, also have a PDF or and uh, EPUB and uh, docbook. Uh, I think. The, the most interesting uh, format are HTML5 and PDF. And um, for the HTML5, you can uh, customize the rendering uh, via CSS files. Uh, and with PDF, you also you, you can uh, customize the, the PDF output. And I will show you the, the same uh, document I, I showed you. Uh, earlier, but as a PDF uh, file with uh, Wovalab customization. So you have, oh, excuse me. 
uh, you have the the a title page with the the company logo you have the table of content that that works the same so you can click on the the links and on each pages you have a footer and, and a header with a company logo and uh, different things you can uh, add and the uh, fonts uh, used are the one used by your lab etc so you can customize the, the output really uh, easily uh, i'd like to show you some Did we lose Olivier? Did I Seems freeze like or did you guys freeze? Okay, so you guys are still there. Olivier just disappeared. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like he's back. You disappeared yeah. for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you can see my screen still? Yes, I can still okay. see it. Can everybody else? Okay. So uh, I was saying that I. I would like to show you some example from just, yes. Excuse me. Just my setup, my screen setup has changed. I'm sorry for my other hello. Okay. Um, so, I, I, I'd like to show you some example from Antidoc users, so on real projects, uh, and when you, what you can get. So uh, this is a graph uh, from a larger application. Uh, the entire, um, the entire uh, document uh, is more than one, uh, 1,500 pages, but- uh, Olivier, we cannot see the graph. If it's oh. supposed to be yeah, we're still seeing the slides. I, I will stop. stop. You might have to stop sharing and restart okay. and share your entire screen or something, yeah. There you go. Can you see the graph? Yes, we can see it now. Okay, so this is a larger graph uh, than uh, we uh, showed uh, before on the, the small uh, project uh, I, I made uh, the documentation. So this is part of uh, documentation that uh, have more than 1000 pages. Um, I have another graph this is uh, one application uh, I I've been working on this year. Uh, this is more than 40 uh, DQMH modules. And, and you can see, uh, even if you are not able to, to read the, the name of the modules, you can see the, the different modules that are uh, specific and uh, as I said before, if something is wrong here, you are you can see it uh, really quickly. And that kind of representation, uh, you, you cannot uh, have this uh, reading lab you code. And uh, you have some pages. Uh, I pick some pages of the, the this documentation. This documentation, it's I, I think about five hundred pages, uh, and, and you have the the different uh, pages for some modules. So you can see that um, you have really the, the communication and the link between the, the modules. So how it works. Um, the challenge was to, to find a way to offer uh, multiple uh, uh, multiple output file formats. And uh, I really want to find a, a solution that was easy to maintain and that, uh, and I, I want to concentrate development effort on, on documentation content. 
uh, rather than generating the different file formats. Uh, it's not the thing I, I like to do, uh, and it's for me, it's not valuable. But uh, getting more information from the project is really valuable. And uh, so what, what was the solution? Uh, the solution was to write simple plain text file. It's really easy to, to write uh, text file with LabVIEW. And uh, we used uh, ASCII doc syntax. Uh, ASCII doc syntax is a, a markup format uh, like Markdown or I think uh, or LaTeX, et cetera, et cetera. There, there are different uh, kind of uh, markup uh, syntax. But ASCII doc is really useful and it comes with ASCII doctor toolchain. And uh, this toolchain uh, allows you to, to convert ASCII doc files uh, to the final format, so PDF, HTML, etc. Uh, and if we look at how things work, uh, we have Antidoc working uh, in LabVIEW. You can trigger Antidoc from the, the UI or from the command line. And Antidoc is going to, to parse the project. And uh, it just outputs um, an intermediate file, uh, a text file, uh, with the extension, the ADOC uh, extension. And with this file, you have two different ways to uh, get the, the final output. I will say the, the easiest and fastest way is to use your web browser with the, the extension, and you are going to to, to see uh, an HTML preview of, the, um, of your uh, documentation. Or you can use the tool chain. Uh, so you can uh, use it from your CI. You can use it from Docker. You can install, it lo install the tool chain locally on your uh, PC. Uh, and, and you can get the H HTML and PDF uh, output uh, from there. So. Uh, for Antidoc um, development, it's really uh, just uh, outputting the ADOC uh, file. And, and that's, I think that's a, a great solution because uh, I'm not dealing with the, the different uh, outputs. Uh, I need to say that Antidoc rely on open source projects. So ASCII Doctor is open source. Uh, and uh, we also have three uh, other toolkits, uh, LabVIEW toolkit, open source uh, LabVIEW toolkit uh, we use in uh, Antidoc. ASCII Doc toolkit for LabVIEW, that's uh, my first open source project. And uh, I use the, this toolkit to generate the, the, the ADOC uh, file. Uh, graph builder uh, that helps to um, generate the graphs you you saw, and uh, GCLI uh, to uh, to get the, the CLI tool uh, to integrate Antidoc uh, into your your CI. Uh, obviously, uh, Antidoc is open source too. Uh, so you can help uh, Antidoc uh, project uh, by reporting issues, uh, sharing feature uh, ideas, uh, contributing to the code or documentation. And probably if you use Antidoc and you like Antidoc, the, the first thing you can do is just uh, starting the, the app on VIPM or on GitLab. Uh, and uh, it's something that uh, uh, make uh, contributors really uh, happy. Uh, and speaking of contribu contrib contributors, uh, I, I want to take the opportunity uh, of this presentation to, to give a special thanks to, to the Antigodoc uh, contributors. So uh, Bertrand, Cyril, Fabiola, Jorg, and, and Tatiana, thank you for, for your work. Uh, and uh, we are still working um, on new things with uh, all these guys and girls. And uh, that's something really uh, interesting for me uh, as a personal project.
um, last part, uh, what's uh, about the future of Antidoc? Um, the first thing I, I'd like to uh, release uh, is the UML class diagram. So I told you that uh, at this time, um, you can get the most of Antidoc if you are using DQMH. Uh, as I'm using DQMH, I'm also using uh, object-oriented. And so that's why uh, I, I would like to, to have this uh, UML class diagram in the, the documentation. And I think it's going to be really useful for people that are not using DQMH, but are uh, using uh, uh, object-oriented uh, program. Uh, so this is a work in progress, and I, I will show you uh, the last um, development I made. Uh, I think uh, it could be interesting to, to have your, your feedback uh, if, you, if you have some. The, the other thing I, I want to work on is working on <coughs> other framework support. Or I think about a uh, actor framework or GK state machine object or I don't know any public uh, framework. Uh, I would say that uh, for this specific uh, thing, I, I will have, I, I will need the the help of uh, users of this framework because I really uh, I I know uh, really well the QMH. I know what uh, I what could be really uh, useful to have in a documentation, but I don't know about that for actor framework or other uh, support. So I think uh, in 2021, I, I will try to, to get some help from uh, actor framework users or other uh, framework. And there are more to, to come. Uh, improve the QMH framework parsing, uh, add some libraries uh, filtering, uh, because probably you don't want to get all your libraries uh, documented. Uh, adding the multi-target support. Um, why not localize the output? Uh, at, at this time, it's uh, in English, but who knows? Uh, and uh, there are uh, many other uh, feature requests in uh, in the GitLab project. So just one that come in mind, uh, and we are speaking about that for two weeks now. It's uh, adding a way to document test and uh, code. Uh, I am not uh, I'm not using test and I know how it works, but uh, I have three or four different users that, that, that told me that uh, they, they would like to, to work on the, the test and part. So probably it will uh, came some times in the future. Um, so Olivier, are there specific yeah. things that you're looking for people to help you on? Like, is, is there a specific ask or just There's, There is an issue in the project on GitLab uh, if people are likely to help on this, just connect uh, on GitLab. And uh, this is Cyril Gambini uh, from Neosoft that led the, this part of the, the development. So if people are, are willing to help, uh, just go ahead and uh, help. Uh, it will be really appreciated, I think. And uh, I will just um, manage the, the thing on how it's going to be added in Antidoc and not on the test on part uh, at mm -hmm. this time. Um, that's all for my presentation. There is a resource page here. I can show you uh, an output uh, of um, the last uh, development I made uh, about the UML uh, feature, if you want. Um, yeah, I think that would be useful. 
yeah so this is this is really the the first uh the first draft uh there, there is uh also some uh, improvement here you, you can see that this is a uh, the html output and so the, now the table of content is on the, the left so as long as you are, have a, a really big um, document you can uh, still see the, the table of content yeah, it's it could be useful uh, and uh, this is uh, the the documentation of uh, a really simple project uh, you can find in the uh, in the examples uh, in the lab view examples so this is the project the, the example it, it, it's it called it's called the board testing and uh it's really well documented so you you have the 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 project description uh i, I just run antidoc on this project and, and get this so uh you have the the uml representation of, of all the the classes in the project and after that you have the for each class you have the representation of the class and the public uh, functions and that for each uh, class what is, the, uh, is this uh, uml generated as part of the ascii doc or is, do you use plant uml or something this is this is ascii doc that uh, generate the the final document but uh with ASCII doc syntax, you can integrate plant UML syntax. Ah, okay. Yeah. So this is plant UML into ASCII doc syntax. And ASCII doc toolchain is rendering these graphs. So that's all for my presentation. So if you have any questions, uh, and we can discuss about documentation topic. Uh, there are a few things in the chat. So one, Danielle said that she's very happy to hear that it's open source. So that's good. Yeah. Uh, the second is a question from Dennis. So besides the static class diagrams that you have shown, are you planning on doing some sort of dynamic UML diagrams? For example, uh, sequence or interaction diagrams? That's that's a question I, I have for Two weeks. I, I, I did. I, I've been doing this presentation since GLA Summit. I, I, I'm. I, I did it for a Spanish group. I did it for a French user group, and I, 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 I do it uh, today. Uh, and I think it, I had this question two or three times. Uh, this is something uh, that could be really interesting. But uh, for me, it's the next step because uh, having this uh, um, kind of representation, uh, I can't see how I can get uh, this representation without running the, the code. And so to automate uh, this kind of thing, I need to, to have ideas so uh, this is definitely something interesting uh, but i i didn't uh, think about how i can get it uh, in antidoc any ideas are, are welcome well, i do have a question then can you include like external stuff very easily so like for example say i drew up a sequence diagram separately it's not auto generated and it's just sitting there as a PNG. Can I include that somehow? Yeah, we. You, this is a, a plain text. So mm -hmm. the, the the document generated by uh, Antidoc is just plain text. So if you know uh, uh, ASCII doc syntax, it's really easy to uh, add things yeah. uh, in the document. And more uh, moreover, uh, you can include other files. So one way to add um, uh, custom content would be to uh, allow some includes in some sections etc so you can say that uh, i want to add this section and this section uh, 
will be uh, uh, obtained, uh, including this file I wrote on my side with another tool, uh, manually, uh, etc. So it's really easy. ASCII-Doc syntax is really fun to use when you are a developer. And uh, I made, just for, for the record, uh, my presentation uh, here is not made with uh, PowerPoint, but it's made with ASCII-Doc files uh, using a reveal.js uh, tool. Uh, this is a, a JavaScript tool. And uh, I, now I, I write almost all my documents uh, with plain text using ASCII doc syntax. Uh, so it's more than just using it for, for anti-doc. And it's allow me to, uh, to uh, use uh, Git to, to do uh, versioning of my documents. Uh, it's really, uh, and it's really fast to edit. Uh, and to get beautiful PDF uh, very quickly, just for the record. So I don't know if I uh, if I reply uh, to to your uh, uh, question uh, about uh, inserting uh, things from. Uh, yeah. No. I mean, I, I would envision that you could draw your own sequence diagrams or generate them some other way and then include them. Yeah. And yeah. also too. Yeah. Also too. For my personal use for development or documentation, you probably also want some generic description of the, the the high level, like this is the problem I'm trying to solve, which probably wouldn't change much either. And that could be included like right there, the project description. Perfect. Yeah, that, that's that's my point. I, I, I really want to use LabVIEW as a main uh, source of, uh, of uh, content. So, I try to get uh, things where you can add them uh, into LabVIEW. And uh, using Antidoc, like, uh, with Antidoc, I see a lot of uh, uh, value to add description to things. Uh, and that's something uh, in the past I was just saying that nobody is going to, to read the description of a VI, nobody is going to read the description of a library. But now this is Antidoc that read the, this description and you get uh, everything in your document. And that's, I think, really interesting. Yeah, another thing that might be useful or interesting to add here maybe too is like some change notes or change log or something. Maybe you write a little tool or something that either like pulls it out of Git or something or you just like keep it up to date yourself or whatever. So seems like a, a very useful thing to have. Do you have any other questions, comments? Uh, Stefan just put a comment out there. Actor framework sequence diagram parser creates a sequence diagram you an AF and plant UML. Yes, I, I, I had seen something like that. Um, uh, that's on the forums, right, Stefan, where you get that somewhere on the forums? I think it's written in like Python. Yeah, it yeah. is. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yeah Pio, Piotr made it. It's, it's a, a Python script that converts the login to plant UML. Very cool. Uh, and Danielle has a question of what does it generate if you aren't using DQMH? The, uh, Currently, uh, we are um, uh, listing all the LVlib and all the, L, uh, the LV class. So if your LVlib uh, as a description, if your LV class as a description, uh, currently it's just going to list uh, this uh, kind of items and all the, the public uh, VI related to the LVLibs and uh, the classes. For the 1.2 uh, version, uh, this will be with the, the UML representation. So, so far without DQMH, it's not really useful, I think. But I, I, I'd like to emphasize that it's not a tool just for 
DQMH user. The first version are for DQMH user because uh, I had to, to, to make a choice and uh, it was for me uh, obvious to, to, to use, uh, to, to, to write the code for, for DQMH because uh, this is the tool I, I am using every day, but uh, you don't need to have DQMH installed to use Antidoc. So I think your UML diagrams go a long way towards making it useful outside of DQMH. Um, I have a question though, like how hard is it to add a new module if I want, like for example, like the Actor Framework or something like that, like is that, is there like a plugin architecture that I can do that easily? Or is that more like, hey, join the open source project and, and add it to the project for everybody? No, it, it would be great to have this as a plugin architecture, but uh, I tend to be pragmatic. Uh, I, I know how to uh, manage plugin architecture. I have experience uh, with this kind of architecture, and I know that it adds a lot of time in your development. So it's really great, but uh, I, this is an open source project. So I'm working uh, on it during the nights, uh, during some spare time I, I get, and I, I really want to validate the whole process. Adding uh, an architecture plugin, it's uh, totally um, uh, possible. Uh, but I, I don't want to spend time on on that kind of development. Uh, and to uh, give you a, a reply on how it's easy or not to add uh, new things, um, I'm probably not the best one to uh, reply that because I, I would say that the code is pretty uh, easy to modify, <laughs> but uh, it's relying on uh, on objects. So when you want to, you have a parser, basically you, you pass the project and, and you create objects and these objects are rendered uh, in ASCII-Doc. So you, you are just creating, uh, I have DQMH module object, I have LV class object, I have LVLib object, I have DQMH event object. Mm -hmm. And I make arrays from what I can get from the the project, and I give that to a, a rendering uh, object that generate the, the output. So okay. just creating objects and uh, passing the project to get the, the information. Yeah, so I think Albert's question is similar, but uh, he says, I ran it on another framework, but it has to recognize modules. So how can we easily add such a structure? Yeah, to DQMH. So I think his question is similar, right? You have to specify yeah. that, oh, if you find an LVLib and it meets this form factor or whatever, now it's an yeah. actor. And now you can treat it like an actor framework actor. And then you'd have a separate rendering object or something to render that. Ba ba basically, uh, I I get um, I can share my screen probably and show you the code. Yeah, it, it yeah, could be, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, it could be. I, I so, so from what it sounds like, you parse the project, you come up with all these objects, and they all have some sort of rendering method that then generates the code, right? Or like a rendering object or something. Yeah, that kind of helps with that. So you would just be overriding or adding some additional classes on. Exactly. Yeah. Um, just that. This is not the right one. Um, just need to run my virtual machine. Uh, and, uh, the joys of lab view. <laughs> Pretty simple well, project dragon, and you just like no more virtual machines, just click a button, right? Something like that. Um, I'm going to share my screen with the virtual machine. This is the one. Yeah, the screen sharing should work with a VM. If you share your main screen and then open up the VM, it should, uh, yeah, 
that seems to work for me when every time I've screen? done it. I cannot see your screen yet. No. Nope. Uh, I have to, I think I, I forget to click on, yeah. Here it is, I think. You can see my screen? Yeah. Oh, that's another good question. Uh, how far back does it go? The LabVIEW 2014? Is that yeah, 14. Okay. But I'm asking if uh, in the future uh, I'm not going to to change for uh, 2017 to get uh, the map and sets. Uh, because if you are passing a project uh, with map and set, I, I, I'm not able to, to see that. Uh, for, for the UML representation, for example. If your uh, class uh, has a, a map in uh, his private, private data uh, with uh, LabVIEW uh, 2014, I, I, I won't be able to, to see that. Maps and sets are only in 2019. Yeah, I thought it was 2019. Maps? Yeah, you, you're right. Uh, I was thinking about Mediable VI. Uh, there might be some. VI. There might be some way to to do a little something with it because don't all it outputs like a type descriptor or something, and you might be able to see the type descriptor and just know that it's a map. But yeah. I don't. You might not be able to do anything with it. So yeah, I don't know. We'll see. So everything uh, is happening uh, here uh, and here. So here I'm creating uh, the the documents. So I create a doc, it's an object. Uh, the, the document has uh, sections, this is another object. And at the end, I generate the, the document. And so the parsing uh, is made. Okay, here. so here's where you parse, okay. Yeah, and basically what we get is the project reference. And for each target, we are getting all the library in the target and all the VI. Uh, okay. And after that, we have all the thing here. So, so if I have we have a library. If it's a library, we have a, a function that uh, try to know if it's a decrematch module or not. So we can have another framework based on uh, LVD. Yeah. So you have. Uh, we will have to 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 have this function uh, more clever to to get its uh, decrematch module uh, other framework or just a library. And uh, if it's a library, you pass the library differently uh, from the decrematch module, etc. And at 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 the end, you just have LV class object, decrematch module object, other libraries, and uh, custom errors. Uh, this is something I, I added uh, for the, the, the next version. Um, the QMH module uh, have uh, a way to add custom errors so we can list the errors for each module and for all the targets so you can see if your errors uh, number are, um, are good or not, if, if there are duplication or, or not. And so this, everything is here because uh, w w with the, this objects, uh, you have, uh, so let's see each blocks. Uh, so if I, I get to the VI, for example, uh, I have a render uh, function. I can um, uh, Okay. So, so each class then has a render uh, function. Yeah, and, and, and the render right function, uh, it's getting the information and, and you have some function that help you to build uh, the final document. Cool. Uh, question, I think you hit on this, but just to be clear, it, it will pick up VIs and stuff in libraries on RT targets as well, right? Yes. Okay. In the next version, okay. it, it will. 
Cool. Yeah. Good. All right. Any other questions? The DTMH models, it relies a lot on the, the strings that are in there, documentation or just plain text in the block diagrams or I'm sorry, I, I can't understand. So for our DQMH modules um, to, to figure out um, relationships and, and documentation and stuff like that, does it rely on text that it's inside the, the modules? Because for so, Active Framework, you probably need to do the same then, same kind of yeah. documenting your PIs. Yeah, I understand. Uh... There are different things uh, you can have. Uh, the first thing you, you can uh, get from the QMH module is to know if uh, there is requests or the events, the different events. So you have requests and you have broadcasts. This is really easy to, to get this information because uh, each VI are tagged. So you just have to read the tag. Uh, this is uh, something I, I didn't know before, but uh, I can see you have uh, user. Uh, I don't know this uh, guy. I think it's the hidden gem. Yeah. Uh, two, 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 two. User Maybe, tags. Yeah, user yeah, tags. Yeah. This is information you can add to your VI without uh writing uh a comment so you you can see uh and write uh this information without uh this function but in the qmh uh each events uh are tagged so it's really easy to know if a vi uh, is an event a broadcast event uh, a request and uh, when you look uh after that uh, I, i'm looking to uh who is coding the this vi to know the link between uh, the different modules. Uh, and there is a passing on the um, user uh, structure, the, the event structure. So each case, uh, uh, it's event uh, case are, are formatted uh, in a specific way. You, so you can know that uh, this, uh, this VI is uh, listening uh, this uh, event, this broadcast event. So I can make the, the relationship uh, graph. So for DTOMH, that's very convenient because uh, it's heavily tagged and, and documented with uh, um, uh, all those labels and stuff like that. But other frameworks are less uh, straightforward to do. So Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you're right, Stefan. Uh, yeah, we need to, to get this information, we need to have some structure, some framework. Framework is the right word, I think. And uh, if your framework is really well designed, I think you you get the information. Uh, if you're f and and speaking of of DQMH, with the the, the scripting tools you have with DQMH, uh, you are pretty sure that. Any DQMH developer is going is going to to use DQMH uh, as we expect. DQMH uh, uh, is being used. So, so I think uh, it's really uh, easy to to get this information. I don't really know about actor framework. I. I, I didn't have the opportunity to to work to to really work with vector framework. Um, we use it and a lot. We use it really a lot, but and it, I think it's a good framework. But um, it's not that straightforward for this kind of documentation to get this information out of it. So that that will be harder. It needs a lot of more, more scripting, and you are expecting things to be in a certain way. And I don't think that every actor will be this, the same because it's scripted, but it's also uh, modified a lot after that. My, my, my guess is that I will have to, to post something on the actor framework community to ask two questions. I have two questions about actor framework. The first one is what kind of 
information you want to get from a, a, a generating documentation? What kind of graph uh, will be useful for you to understand your, your code? And the second question is, okay, you want that? How I can get that in a way that uh, it will be uh, the same for any actor framework user? And, and this is a question I, I, I <laughs> yeah. But I think it's going to be really interesting, uh, and I will uh, learn a lot on that. Uh, I hope to have the time to, to do that. And if I don't have the time, uh, what about contributors? And that's something related to, to Antidoc project. Uh, one year ago, uh, I never made a, an open source project. And today, I have a project used by some people that find it useful it's great uh and uh i have contributors so it's really interesting for me uh as i'm working alone for two years now uh i, I had a lot of different um uh, experience of sharing information with uh, other lab view developer uh, all around the world and it's really really uh exciting for me to to work on this project Cool. Uh, we did have one more question, and Danielle is asking, is there a projected release date for the next version? <laughs> Christmas? <laughs> no, I think that, that the, we, have, we have everything working. I, I don't have uh, any um, concerns about uh, doing things. I know that everything I want to to have in the, the, the next version uh, is working. Uh, but uh, I know that uh, to get uh, a, a version I, I can release, uh, there's a lot of work to do to, to polish everything, to, to make it work in different situation, uh, multi-target, uh, one target. Um, but I, I I want to, to say uh, January 2021 will be the, the release date. And if you are not happy, uh, you can be refund. It's free. So I think, uh, <laughs> no, no, I, I really want to, to get this uh, as fast as I can, uh, as we can, because the, there are contributors on the, the next version. So, so I cross my fingers. All right. Uh, if there are no more questions, uh, we've run over a few minutes. So uh, thank you very much, Olivier. Uh, thank you guys for coming. Uh, remember we have our uh, unit testing workshop if you're interested in that. And we also have our mastermind program. So you can look up either of those things or if you want to talk to me, you can just send me an email and happy to answer emails. So. All right, uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you guys. Thank you, Sam, for having me. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.